Hello, I'm out here at the Merritt Valley Road underpass. Uh, when the railroad was put through in 1847, 1848, and finally opened in 1849, um, many stone structures were created along the railroad right of way uh, for roads to uh, go under and for streams to be forded, and a um, number of cattle crossings were created uh, along the way. All of the stone for these projects was generally quarried very close to the project as there were no no trucks or even of course the railroad hadn't even uh, had rail through here yet uh, so moving the stones was a very manually intensive uh, process done by uh, just rolling uh, stones after they've been quarried onto stone boats which were just basically sleds that were pulled behind oxen and the oxen would drag them to the uh, project so um, like in the case here at Merritt Valley where much of the stone was quarried up on the hill behind me here um, they wanted to be up so that the oxen could just drag the stone down and again very close to the project. Uh, we'll take a look at many of those uh, projects uh, quickly here and then uh, we'll start talking about uh, the various places the stones were quarried along the way. Again the quarrying was all done as close to the project as possible um, so uh, there's quarry sites basically all along the uh, railroad right of way. On Andover's uh, portion of the right of way is this former cattle crossing at the corner of Route 6 and uh, Route 87. You can see the stonework on the right hand side in the shadows and a little bit on the left before the concrete uh, was put in in 1912 during the railroad right of way upgrade. Uh, bridge abutments for the bridge over Blackman's Brook. Bridge abutments for the Merritt Valley Road underpass, which is 16 underpass. Here's a go. Pass is this uh, nice culvert that was uh, built for the Staddle Brook to run through. The railroad crosses Burnett Brook Road. We have this uh, culvert where the uh, Burnett Brook runs through. It's a very extensive uh, stonework and uh, very closely mirrors the uh, tunnel at Tunnel Road in Vernon. That project took over two years to complete. This one was probably a very uh, time consuming project as well. Three Hill Drive, uh, you would find this cattle crossing. Crossing I just showed, and just before you get to Bailey Road, is uh, this culvert. Uh, not nearly as uh, nicely done as the one down at Route 316, but obviously it's uh, held up over the years very well. The trail is this culvert that uh, used to be all stonework. You can see a little bit of uh, on the left and see the remnants uh, kind of falling apart on the right-hand side. That again in 1912 when the railroad came through and redid uh, much of the right-of-way, this was uh, turned into a concrete uh, culvert with just a uh, metal tube through the bottom of it. Hello, I'm out here on the uh, town property, probably uh, the northeast corner of the uh, Percy Cook uh, property that uh, a lot of new trails have been built on recently. Uh, this is the beginnings of the sloping down toward the railroad bed, uh, not far from the Merritt Valley Road uh, underpass. Um, this is a stone that was apparently going to be used, um, set to be uh, quarried for stone for that particular project, and uh, was a, I guess they finished up, decided they didn't need it. But you can see one of the first things they would have done once they selected the desirable stone would be to trench around the edges of it to uh, expose more of it. Again, out here on the town property, a little bit above the uh, railroad bed, this is where the stones, this whole side of this hill is where the stones were quarried to uh, make the bridge abutments for that underpass. And uh, again, this is a stone quite a ways up the hill that was uh, obviously being prepared to be quarried, but uh, they never took anything off of it. Again, they dug around the stone and uh, make room to work. This one they actually uh, drilled the holes in and um, got prepared to use it, but uh, obviously it was never broken. <laughs> Once the uh, rock had been prepared or the ground had been moved away from the rock that they were going to uh, quarry to make blocks to use for the uh, bridge abutments and the other uh, stone structures along the railroad uh, site, uh, along the railroad path, um, the first or the next step would be to drill holes in the uh, in the rock in preparation for breaking it. Um, they would have used a star drill like this, just a hand held drill. They would have used a small sledgehammer 
and they would have come up against the rock and just tap, 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 and each uh, blow of the hammer, they'd turn the drill just slightly, and eventually they'd have a hole. Uh, this drill is slightly larger than these particular holes are, but uh, certainly it would have been a similar type of drill, and possibly the uh, um, drill that they used had just worn down uh, to you know start out this size and worn down. Um, most likely they would not have had gloves to wear. They certainly probably didn't have eye protection or ear protection, uh, which we would all take for granted today. But in those days, labor was cheap. People were cheap and they didn't worry about uh, safety measures along those lines. Once you had <coughs> a series of holes and you were ready to break the rock, they would take some dried wooden pegs. They'd put one in each of the uh, holes. They would then hammer these in. Um, I'm not going to because I want to be able to get them back out, but they would hammer them in as far as they could get them, and then they'd pour water on them. Uh, the dried wood would naturally absorb the water. As the peg absorbed the water, it would expand, exerting pressure, and hopefully popping the rock along the line of holes. Once they had um, the blocks made to the size they wanted, um, they would then have put them on a stone boat, uh, basically a sled, um, probably pulled by oxen, or most likely pulled by oxen, and uh, taken to the project site. Um, again, we're uphill here, so it would be relatively easy sledding uh -huh, um, to take them down to the project site. And further down the hill yet, toward the uh, railroad bed, we have an area that was actually uh, quarried. These, uh, this is the remnants of what's left here. Uh, you can see the drill marks all along this particular rock where pieces were broken off and taken. You can see there's a step down here where they obviously took a layer out down below as well. Um, again, took the layer out here. Uh, this is relatively flat on the top, so I'm guessing they probably took a layer off the top as well. Uh, but again, every six inches, we've got drill marks. They would have plugged those with uh, wooden pegs, poured water on them, break the rock off, put it on a uh, rock boat, and taking it down the hill to the project site at Merritt Valley Road. It's along the railroad right away where stone was quarried for the various projects. This particular spot has a number of uh, stones that were split off uh, using the drill and wooden peg method, but uh, the stones were not taken down to the project, so obviously they weren't needed. We can see that it was drilled and uh, even cracked down the uh, middle of the stone, but uh, no further uh, splitting was done where the additional holes are, can be seen. Again, just prepared but not used. A rock here where it's obviously had pieces taken off of it and was drilled to uh, further uh, chunk it. And again, uh, some of it was used, taken away uh, to become part of one of the projects, and then uh, more holes drilled, but uh, no further rock taken off at that point. Overly obvious, as uh, nature's had uh, about 150 years to uh, reclaim the sites and uh, grow trees and uh, throw debris down and uh, otherwise um, obscure them. If there's anything out there of interest that you'd like me to investigate or possibly make a little video over. Thanks again.